Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we proudly present our spectacular show of podcast magic and imagination full of Disney wonder, news, and pop culture. It's the Main Street Electrical Podcast with Jim Novotny and David Dollar. Well, hey, Kyla. Hello, David. It's the Main Street Electrical Podcast. Podcast. Good enough. <laughs> it's a tiny podcast. <laughs> uh, Dave and Kyla here with you today because Jen and Heather are down at the Earmarked Summit in Orlando. They're getting their fill of just Disney and Disney news and Disney culture. And of course, they were at Hollywood Studios at 6 a.m. yesterday morning doing Toy Story Mania. And they met John Stamos today. So that was fun. Um, so, cool. yeah, it's been a whole thing for them. Um, for people who don't know what Earmark is, let me throw that out there real quick. Uh, Earmark is a designation by Disney for agencies who are really successful working with Disney. Uh, you know, there's a whole lot of metrics to it. Don't want to go into all that. But yeah, we are an Earmarked agency upon us our travel. And they ask the owners of Earmarked agencies to come down once a year to do a little summit. Sometimes it's Orlando, sometimes it's in California. And so that's where they are right now. And they will come back next week with, I'm sure, lots of tales of magic and joy and fluff and fun. Uh, Kyla, <laughs> we have a lot to talk about today. We, yes, yes, we do. On, on Sunday, we were messaging back and forth. Okay, you're on the podcast. What do we want to talk about? Well, do we want to talk about the Halloween party? Sure, we'll talk about that. That sounds good. And then by today, we've got Big Thunder, we've got Dinosaur, we've got Jungle Cruise, we've got we've got the Premiere Pass, we've got Candlelight. all the holiday stuff, Candlelight Processional, I didn't even write that down, Candlelight Processional, Universal Rumors, uh, and then of course, the Halloween Party, so we'll get to that. Kyla, how did you Disney this week? Um, well, I'm wearing my Walt Disney shirt. Nice. Most magical nice. place on earth, so let's just start there. Um, <laughs> second, I am trying to figure out, this is, this is just me. This is just mm-hmm. me being me. Um, I am going to Disney world with my family in April, including my brother who listens to this podcast. Thank you, Damon. And, um, I booked dates for myself, but now I want to change them to come in earlier mm-hmm. as I do with almost every trip. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> So now I'm just trying to weigh my options in coming in a night earlier to hang out more with mm-hmm. my my brother and his wife and their cute little kids and my dad um, and the girls and Frank, of course. Of so course. I'm course just trying to like mm-hmm. weigh my options. Do I want to like check off the last Disney resort I need yes. to check off? Yes. It's all star movies. Yes. Do it. <laughs> do, it. Do, do it. Do it. Or do I do I do something else that's like you know, more fun. Um, <laughs> now, remind me, are you somebody, when you check off resorts, do you consider one all-star to be all all-stars or do you no. want to do all three? Because I no, do all three. I, I, I am doing all three. I, nice. Alexa and I mm-hmm. stayed at All-Star Sports mm-hmm. um, for one night last year before tap, tap. our agency, you mm-hmm. know, holiday meeting. Right. And I stayed at All-Star Music um, about five years ago with a group of friends. So right. now, like, so because of that, when I wasn't on my quest yet, but now... Because I am on this quest that I put on myself, now mm-hmm. I have to check off movies, and then that will be the last resort. Do you consider Copper Creek and Boulder Ridge as part of wilderness, or do you want to stay in all three? Because so, I consider all as wilderness. I've been to wilderness a lot, I so I, I check them off. I'm done there with wilderness. Okay. I no, I don't like count like the villas at Grand Floridian and Grand Floridian, right. like. Yeah, right. like what, what's the tower? Bay Lake Tower yeah. at Contemporary and Contemporary. No, no. They're mm-hmm. all one thing under the same umbrella. Right. So like Boulder Ridge and Copper Creek. I've stayed at both anyway. So that to me is under the umbrella of Wilderness Lodge anyway. Check. Right. I've stayed at Contemporary. Well, check. <laughs> I kind of think of it as a if they share a bus service and if they share a main lobby and main dining food court, what it, like what Copper Creek and Boulder Ridge does with wilderness, yep. like Bay Lake does with temporary. Um, you know, I consider all that, uh, you know, I've, I've stated, I think 27, 28 of the resorts. There's still a handful. I haven't done Riviera. I have yet to do beach club. I randomly have yet to do and old Key oh, West. Oh, see, I have yet beach to Club's do. That's a good one, um, but don't go to beach club between January and June next year, because they're going to the be closed. refurbing the pool. And that's yes. like the best pool. So yes, wait until, pool. 
you know, a beach club stay. Right, Wait for right, right. Club. But those are the ones I need. Of course, they're going to open Reflections or whatever it's called, a Polynesian. Although I guess that's yeah. going to be part of Polynesian. No, um, that's part of Polynesian. Reflections yeah. was supposed Perfect. to be the Lakeside Lodge, remember? Oh, that's right. Over yeah. by Fort Wilderness. But I'm oh, hoping right. that they open that because the construction has started. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, we're we're getting there. You're probably going to beat me to it, but uh, but we'll get there. So I am on a. I don't ask me why. I go CD hunting about every about once a week or so. You see all the CDs behind me. I have now got to the point where I'm like, okay, I need to go ahead and collect all of their albums. I need to go ahead and collect oh to make God. sure I have all this. It's like I buy them for 50 cents or a dollar, which, by the way, over here, and I'm not going to pick it up. Um, this is not Disney related, but the <laughs> Law and Order box set of all oh 20 God. seasons. <laughs> it's a regular price for $155 on Amazon. Okay. I got it for $5 at the thrift store. All discs are there. The whole thing is pristine. I'm so proud of it. Also, That's a pretty good deal. I don't even like the movie, but I picked up the Pocahontas soundtrack. Oh my god! I did. I have. A, I'm working on getting the soundtracks too. I have a soundtrack to a lot of the films. Um, I don't know that I'll even listen to this very much because you know you're are, so OCD. I really am. I really am. It's really. Oh my god! You like pick up things to be <laughs> part of your collection, even if you don't like them, which is where I would draw the line. Well, it's not that I don't I don't like the movie. Well, no, it's true because I will get the movie because I have to I need to have the entire collection. There's see there's 61 animated canon films. I need to get all the animated films. And I've got like I, oh, I know you of them or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Kyla, look what I got. And you're like, I know, I know, I know, whatever. Yeah, well, it checks the box though, so I get it. I mean, that's yeah, like me. Like yes. I don't like contemporary so much, but I had to check the box on it. So right. Check. Right. And it is um, it is cold enough now that I've got my long sleeve on, got my Pizza Planet shirt on, my first, oh, I guess, long yeah. sleeve of the year. I, I grabbed it yesterday and last night, whatever, put it on and wearing it again Check. this morning. And so here we go. I'm not even going to play the news jingle because we're just going to dive right in. We got so much to talk about here. Okay, uh, first, right off the bat, Universal. I don't know if it was an announcement, if it was leaked, but now they're saying that Universal, Epic Universe, will be open by, uh, by Memorial Day and the tickets will go on sale fairly soon. Fairly soon, it could be next week. Fairly soon, it could be January. We don't know. Um, anybody that tells you out there, oh, yes, we know for sure this is going to happen. It's confirmed. Without Universal saying it, they don't know. Um, no matter how much it seems like they just don't. Because we don't it's know anything, right? A rumor. Um, rumor. Rumor mill. And yes. I'm a little shocked they're not opening by spring break. But I guess Memorial Day works. I don't, I, I don't know. Uh, so they down there, I think, for the long weekend. Like in Orlando yeah. in general. Yeah. I think it's like a busy, like long weekend. People right. like to go down there. So, I mean, I see what they're doing, but spring mm -hmm. break probably would have made a little bit more sense, although a little bit more chaotic. <laughs> right, right. Well, Disney, and I, I don't know, I mean, Disney obviously has all these news announcements today. It's it's funny because, again, we had the conversation about not knowing what to talk about on the episode. We kind of decided on the Halloween show, Halloween party. Um you know, just one thing after the other in the last few days have just been dropped. One thing that we're hearing is one one thing that is confirmed: Big Thunder Railroad in Disney oh. World will be closing on January the sixth. January the fifth is the last day you can ride it. Um, it's going to reopen, so people are like, "Is it closed forever?" It's not closed forever. It is going to be closed for like a year. <laughs> It's no, it's one of my year. favorites too. I'm well, it's one of those. I think it's going to be. They have to probably close it at some point to do buildings, land construction. My guess is that area there has to be they have to work on that. Maybe Rivers of America, uh, Cars, Lightning McQueen, blah 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 blah, um, all that. So I'm assuming that's going to interfere with Big Thunder. So they're probably like, we got to close it anyway. Let's go ahead and do all the refurbishments we need to. Go ahead and do the extensive whatever, because they haven't really closed it for a long time in a while. So. Closing it, needs, it for it over needs a, year. a little love. Anyway. Needs a little love. And there's some of those some, spires need a little love. <laughs> supposed to be some enhancements to it. Yes. Uh, I would love them to put a like a like a picture a camera in there. I think that'd be great to have a oh, big thunder. That would be like, a great big thunder picture. Photo. Have that'd you be been on the picture. Disneyland one? I have. I have. It's I a think lot it's of fun. I think that one is actually better. I wish mm -hmm. they would do it a little bit more like that one. It's longer. Actually, you mm -hmm. know what? I think I went on it with you. <laughs> we were <laughs> <Probably>. in Disneyland. <laughs> Probably. Um, but well, I think it's... like I like that one. It seems smoother. It's not as like loud and jerky. That's true. And I, I think that maybe they might be changing. I'm, I'm guessing they're going to change up some of that, too, because there is a lot to there is a lot of too, a lot of sliding and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and the seats are um, kind of made where you slide over and you crush whoever you're sitting next to. My poor <laughs> child has been crushed like a thousand times. So, yes. <laughs> um, I'm thinking Big Thunder is closing in Disneyland as well. I want to say in November, but I could be wrong about no november 18th okay uh november 18th is closing um and i don't know what the extensive refurb part on that is uh but uh yeah i'll be closing november 18th so pay attention to the show and we'll keep you informed on that later so, <laughs> <laughs> we don't know so there's that um dino land and i know you're you're unhappy about this uh 
Mm. They said they were going to start closing Dino Land in phases. There's only like six things in Dino Land anyway, if you include all the food carts and everything, right? Oh, right. So, I was going to say, um, yeah. if that, but you're including food stuff. Yeah. So, well, and because th Disney did, they're, they're closing Triceratops Spin, which it's fine. I think, I think scientifically um, has been recorded to get up to 174 degrees in, in July sun. Uh, I think that's a scientific fact, actually. The, is, the is, is, temperature is, of the seats. Yeah. You're sitting in a lava saurus. It's ridiculous. Right. <laughs> um, and so that's closing down on January the 12th. Also, they're closing all the carnival games, uh, all the Good. carnival games are in there. I've been going to Animal Kingdom for well on 20 years now. I've never played a single one of those games. Girl, like, same. Um, I just it's like I don't even think I knew until recently you had to go into the shop to get to get vouchers to go to the games to play the games, which you can't do that anymore anyway because they're closing the shop, the fossil treasures or whatever it's called. Um, it's the Dino Land shop, the gift shop. They're closing that. So that's the Chester and Hester's one. That one or yeah. another one. Oh, it's the see, one that's where you, a cute shop. Actually, it's the one where you walk out and they're always playing "Walk the Dinosaur" or "Digging Up Bones" or whatever <laughs> bone related song they can find. It's overhead, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's Digging Up Bones, Randy Travis, A Jealous Bone by Patty Loveless, and Walk the Dinosaur by Was Not Was. Those are always the songs I hear. Um, of course you know these songs. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know, I, I don't really have a bone playlist, but those are the songs <laughs> you hear. But that's closing. Staying open, however, are the Trillo Bites and the Dino Bites, which are like little food carts around the area. The mm -hmm. Boneyard is staying open, and the Dinosaur is staying open. Uh, and I think Dinosaur will be the final thing to close, because they people yeah. love that ride, and they want that to be as long as what possible. What about Restaurant Saurus? I like the bar in there. As far as I know, Restaurant Saurus is staying open for right now. Yeah, that little bar in there with Mark, I think that's the bartender. They talk about it on Disney Day Drinkers. He makes great drinks. Well, it's right there on the edge of Dino, Dino Land, so I figure it will probably stay open for a while while anyway I so they close it to make it like you know mirabelle's meals or something whatever they <laughs> gonna change it to i don't know what they're gonna change it to something um i i do kind of miss dino Land. i feel like there was a lot of potential there they they could have done a lot of things with it and just never made it into anything else mm -hmm. um and now they're like oh just close it and one of the dinosaurs is I, I think missing from the dino land ride the dinosaur that eats the other dinosaur i think with the like you you pass by it there's like a dinosaur with one like half a dinosaur oh, hanging out of his yes. mouth i yeah. think animatronic i believe that one is gone um and anytime disney is getting ready to shut something down they just duct tape everything to fix it until it shuts oh, down yeah that's, I, mean, I mean that's what they did with Slash mountain too yeah. it's just well, kind of like pinned and taped yep. together <laughs> half half of great movie ride didn't work anymore by the last days it was it was open oh, i mean just I love uh, that ride. Don't, all the let's animatronics not be were like bitter. let's not be in bitter. place so yeah i'm just saying they're, just, they're <laughs> fixing it and they're gonna close it probably sometime <laughs> next year uh also next year we have learned that the um the little mermaid show which was supposed to open this fall which we all forgot about by the way mm -hmm. which was supposed to open this fall is now being pushed back to probably summer of next year uh i heard somebody make the horrible rumor that what happens if they move that show to the muppet vision theater have it over there so they can use everything else for monsters and i was like don't do that that would be awful that would i don't be... know i mean we still don't really know where monsters land is going right no and i'm not sure i don't know that disney knows yet because <laughs> i feel i feel like they would announce that because so many people are, are clamoring for muppets They're like don't touch muppet vision 3d and at some point, Disney's going to pull the Band-Aid off and say, yes, we're either closing it or, hey, guys, you're safe. We're not going to close it. They right. just haven't said anything. So I'm not sure that Disney knows exactly where it's going to go. I, I don't know. Um, so there are there is all that. Uh, the Jungle Cruise is coming back November the 2nd. And that's always fun because it's, you know, I love that cruise. it's Disney jokes and Christmas jokes and it's like tinsel everywhere. And just, you know, it's the Jungle Cruise except it's the Jingle Cruise. So that starts. For Christmas time with dad yeah. jokes. Exactly. Christmas dad, dad jokes. jokes. Dad jokes. <laughs> All the dad jokes. Uh, and I'll run through these on Disney Parks blog. This is kind of some of the fun stuff they're adding here. And you can just chime in if you want. Uh, yes. You can meet Santa Claus at Disney's Animal Kingdom Park this year. Right. Um, at the 75th Annual Dino Institute Holiday Party, which would be the last Dino Institute what? Holiday Party. <laughs> Which is what, <laughs> Disney? <laughs> uh, I feel like this is something, again, they could have done in years past to make this a thing. And they're like, hey, for one more year, let's do this. It's the 75th Annual Dino Institute, the first one and the last one. Go figure. Um, I, it, it will be held. The 75th. At the, I'm like, where are we getting this from? It will be held at the patio at Restaurant Asaurus. Uh, Santa has invited everybody to join him in this new location as the students and faculty of the Dino Institute celebrate the season in prehistoric fashion from November 12th through the 24th. Bring the whole family because a Santa sighting is perfect for the little ones. Um, so we have no idea what that is other than Santa's going to be there at Christmas. Which is funny because it's like the faculty, the only faculty anybody knows is Hodges with the dinosaur and Claire Huxtable. That's the, that's the 
That's the only people people know from that. This is so Disney. This <laughs> little activity is so Disney. Like, I just, I can't, I can't. Like, we're going to go check all it right. out during the December weekend that yep. we're all there. And it's going to be hilarious. Well, it's, I, I saw a picture yesterday comparing Disney details with some of the modern day stuff they're doing. Like, the you, you may get wet sign for Splash Mountain had like Br'er Rabbit on it. It was like wooden and all detailed with water dripping down. <sighs> and now there's just a sign that says, you might get wet. And I'm like... <laughs> So Disney is pouring all these details into this cool party coming that's going to happen one time at an yep. area that's going to close in like, you know, six months or five months or whatever. Um, you know, yeah. So you can also stop by. Well, after you stop by restaurants, restaurants of sorts to say ho ho to Santa, <laughs> be sure to go back to Discovery Island for the Merry Menagerie, which, by the way, is very cool. Uh, those are the puppets and stuff as you it's walk cute. into Animal yes. Kingdom. Uh, people walking around with the puppets, the birds and the wolves. And it's just, it's really cool puppetry. I mean, you know, it's one of those like, they're there. The guys are there with the puppets. But it's just, what they do with them is just really cool. Um, yeah, so that's Animal Kingdom. Job. New things opening over at Hollywood Studios. Uh, the Juggling Elves. Marvel at the skill of the Juggling Elves. Holiday helpers deliver festive cheer with a side of shenanigans as they show Okey off their dokey. skills. Okie dokie. Okie that one's for Emily. <laughs> uh, catch the jaunty, jolly tool tunes, the tools, tunes of the Holiday Spirit Band, the dynamic brass group, making everybody and your party want to join in the fun and stroll into Santa's good graces. And finally, march along with the season's jukebox as they bring all their performance and pep the collegiate marching band. I like all of this because this is streetmosphere, and we are missing yes. streetmosphere out of all the parks. We need what's, every, we need it everywhere. So, what's the second thing again? Oh, uh, the second thing <laughs> is the Holiday Spirit Band. It's a oh, brass it's a band. group oh, okay. that's going to be singing, uh, which is different than the Seasons Jukebox, which is like a collegiate marching band. So, I guess the the okay. Holiday Spirit Band will that's just be cool. playing in the street, and the marching band will be over there. You know, saints of marching and such. So, uh, so there's all that happening. Marching, marching, exactly. <laughs> all the little mar elves are marching. Uh, <laughs> the candlelight processional. Finally, finally, we've been waiting for this because we let's explain what it is first. We, we can't do our days without knowing what's, what's coming. So, the candlelight <laughs> processional. Why don't you explain it? Why don't you give us a good explanation? Well, I, I'm all right. I've seen it once, but okay. um, so basically during the holiday season mm -hmm. in front of the America Pavilion in that stage area, they will have a processional with choirs dressed in green and yellow robes. Mm -hmm. And once they march down to the stage, pro processional down to the stage, yes. they the are in the shape the of <laughs> processional down to the stage. <laughs> they're in the shape of like a Christmas tree, which is beautiful because they're all holding lit candles. Um, then there is a celebrity narrator who then goes on to narrate the story of Jesus. Am I right on that? That's what it is, right? Yes, I haven't seen it correct. in a long time. You are correct. So. They basically read the story out of the Bible, which is very cool. Okay. Um, and it's one of those, it's one of the things you don't see in a lot of places because, you know, it's religious and, and that aspect of it. But it's a very cool story. It's a very cool presentation. Uh, the, the choir is made up of cast members and local musicians and such. Same thing with the orchestra. Um, so it's not like they just flew somebody in from California. It's like this is these are these are cast members. You might see somebody sing a soprano. It's beautiful. And, and they so may be serving your, your steak in Canada yeah. like the next day. I mean, it's just really, really cool. Um, and they bring in celebrity narrators. Some have been there for years. Very big fan favorites. Others, uh, you know, are brand new to the whole thing. So let's run through real quick. The celebrity narrators, uh, Josh Gad coming early in uh, so late cool. November. Very cool. The voice of Olaf, um, Nick Santos. Now he is uh, an actor who was on the show Superstore. It was on, I'd never watched the show, but I know he's there. He's done some acting, some theater stuff. Chrissy Metz. Uh, she was one of the siblings in This Is Us. Uh, oh, Whoopi yeah. Goldberg. Everybody knows Whoopi from Ghost and from The View. Titus Burgess. He's from Broadway, but also he was in the Netflix show uh, The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. If anybody remembers that. Um, Fan favorite, Brendan Fraser. He came last year for the first time. People love him. And, and he's a nice guy. And from all accounts that I've seen in Hollywood, like there are a group of people that people just, everybody considers a nice guy. Keanu Reeves is one. Brendan mm -hmm. Fraser is another one. Um, brand new to the year, Ralph Macchio coming in mid-December. That'll, That'll be really, really fun. Gary Sinise, he's been back, back many times and people love, love him. him. Now Patrick Harris, a one fan favorite as well. Uh, yes. Pat Sajak. Recently retired off of Wheel of Fortune. Now he has time on his hands, so uh, he can come back and do his thing. Gloria Estefan, and the first thing I imagined was like, I need her writing Guardians with conga playing. 
because how cool would that be? <laughs> how, would wonder, that, how cool would that be? Yes. That's, I mean, that, like we've talked about the Guardian right. songs. That's the best song. That's the one that I like the most. Mm-hmm. So if I was on that ride with her and Conga came on, I might die a little bit. I mean, if I was on the ride with her, play any song you want. I don't care because it's Gloria Estefan. I love Gloria. <laughs> the CDs behind me, I've got an entire row of Gloria Estefan stuff because I love her. But no, Conga would be fantastic. Uh, Edward James Almost, theater actor, Broadway author, yep. uh, speaker. Very cool. I would love to see Edward James Almost. He's, he's one of those been around very forever. Just, yeah, he's one of, the, one of those very classic actors and just seems like a really mm-hmm. upstanding classic guy. Sterling K. Brown, one of the other siblings from This Is uh, Us, also yep. in, the, in the Black Panther movies. Um, and Jodie Benson, who is, um, remind me, She's done some stuff with Disney. Um, I will be there for her. That's exciting. She's the voice, of, course, the voice of Ariel. People love Jenny Benson. Uh, I've got her autobiography. I've not read it yet, uh, but everybody oh, I that I know she had one. She does. She does. Oh, it's I like, need to read that. It's like part of my world or something. It's some play off of Mermaid, whatever, whatever. Uh, so there's that. Now, Kyla, can you just walk up to the Candlelight Life Processional and just find a seat anytime, any old time? Um, you can, but you won't. So what you <laughs> should point. do, <laughs> what you should do is ask your trusty travel agent to book pick us, <laughs> me, me, um, to pick, uh, to pick, to choose, um, to book <laughs> candlelight <laughs> processional <laughs> dining package, mm-hmm. which would include a kind of a pre-fee meal for a set price at a restaurant in Epcot for lunch or dinner right. on mm-hmm. that day. And then you also receive vouchers for the show and they do put you up closer to the stage. We yes. just did it for yes. Eat to the Beat for Food and Wine and we mm-hmm. were in the fourth row. So um, you get a pretty good seat, you get a meal. It's it's yes. a, like a no-brainer, really. And unlike the Epcot fireworks, uh, fireworks dining package, where you have two restaurants to choose from, Rose and Crown and Spice for a Table, and that's it. Um, you actually have 15 restaurants to choose from this time, including Chippendale's Harvest Feast at Garden Grill uh, or La Celia Steakhouse in Canada. Um, you can do a meal for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and you get guaranteed seating for one of the three candlelight processional shows starting October 29th. We can book those. Uh, so, yeah, and, and honestly, let's be honest, if you, and this is no shade on Nick Santos, but I don't know that a lot of people know who nick santos is if you Correct. waited in line for an hour you could probably get a decent seat in nick santos brendan Neil Frazier, patrick harris, Neil patrick harris nope. jody benson no 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 there are people lining up at like five o'clock for the seven o'clock show for the eight o'clock show i mean it's just it's you know and actually they're the, the shows this year are five o'clock six forty five and eight fifteen um and there will be people lining up at two o'clock for the five o'clock show and they cut off at a certain point they're like you, you know we can't take any more else online um uh, and you don't want to you don't want to miss that it's worth having a meal especially since you have 15 choices to choose from you're going to eat there anyway do a dining package right. you get a great meal you get guaranteed seating because you guys did the dining package for uh for eat to the beat with uh, yeah. Patone and whatever and you guys got fairly good seats i mean yeah it was like fourth row it was right. fantastic seats we had a great meal at coral reef right right across from the like the, you know coral reef is next to the aquarium so you're the wall of the restaurant is right. the aquarium so we're like right across from that big table with all seven seven of us eight of us whatever it was um and it was fantastic and then you get your voucher you have to keep it with you and then um we got there and we were in the fourth row heather did get there a little bit earlier so she was in the first row right but course, we were in the course. fourth row and that's still like great seating compared right. to you know being standing waiting. room only well, yeah. and you don't have to wait in line forever either if you have that right. guaranteed package you just get in line like you know, 30 minutes ahead of time or 45 exactly. minutes exactly you know if you want first row so it is it is worth it if that is something that is important to you um speaking of important to you paying prices let's talk a little bit about the premier pass now let me set the scene, Kyla. I was asleep, dead asleep this morning, about five o'clock in the morning, just off in dreamland. And our son, my son, has a has a habit of getting up in the middle of the night, sometimes five or six in the morning, uh, going to the restroom, whatever. He gets up and so Steph will nudge me, go check on him. I'm like, Ugh. so I just want to make sure that he's OK. He's fine going to the bathroom, go back to bed versus going downstairs, turning the TV on or coming to our room or whatever. So he does all that. He goes back to bed. Everything's good. I lay down and I. If I'm up at five in the morning, I'll just grab my phone to check it because I've got clients traveling. Yep. I want to check them. What if somebody sent me a message at 2 a.m.? Hey, we can't do this. Something's happening, whatever. I check my messages. I look at the email real quick, and I'm like, oh, Disney's new upgraded uh, customer experience, guest experience. Premier, what is Premier Pass? So for 30 <laughs> minutes, I'm like scrolling at five in the morning, reading on like phone in my face, yes. trying to keep the like the light down low so it doesn't bother stuff, you know, um, just reading about the Premier Pass. So this is a an extension of the Lightning Lane multi-pass. And so we're going to walk through it kind of real quick. 
as to what this actually is. Premier Pass is basically a, a new one-time entry to each Lightning Lane experience. So when it rolls out, October 23rd for Disneyland, October 30th for Disney World, seven days out, you are able to go onto your app and you can purchase your multi-day Lightning Lane if you want. You can say, I want Magic Kingdom for the day for me and my family, you know, at $28 per person or whatever the cost is. And we're going to get uh, Peter Pan and we're going to get Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. Yay, we're done. Or... You, well, and either one, you can pick the Premier Pass. Select it for the whole family for that one day. It is good for one park. You cannot park hop with it. It's one park. Um, and it will basically allow you entry, one entry to every attraction on there, every attraction in Magic Kingdom. So you can ride everything in Magic Kingdom one time. Can't ride things multiple times. You can do, if you want to do standby, if you want to you know, pay for Tron and extra as well as paying for Premier Pass, you can ride Tron multiple times, do standby, whatever. But it's one entry per attraction, whatever. Okay? So there is that the ride photos are included your ride videos are included so when you go on seven doors the pictures and everything they'll come to your they'll come to your app they're included there um you don't have to set times for attractions you just go ride an attraction you go to columbia harbor house have lunch hey let's get settled here let's go do small world real quick while our lunch settles and then after that we'll do peter pan let's go over to the care like all that you just do all those rides whatever here's the sticky point the price the price rolled in, uh, ranging from one twenty nine to four forty nine per person per pass per day plus tax. Now that's the part that everybody's freaked out about. They're like, "Oh my gosh, the price is so expensive!" And yes, it is expensive. The four forty nine price is going to be your price for like Christmas Day when everything yeah. is really expensive. When you know, when you go in September to All Star movies, you can probably on a rack rate, regular rate, get there for like one thirty, one forty. You're going to be paying three hundred dollars for Christmas Day. It is what it is. It's just more expensive, um, and that's how it rolls out. There, it's a varied set of pricing for this in terms of um, like each part. I think Animal Kingdom is going to start at like 129 up to about 170. Uh, Magic Kingdom is going to be 300 to 449 or whatever. It's various prices. So, the good thing is this the good thing, and I want to say everybody's mind at ease Disney is not taking anything away from anybody. It would be different if they were like, you know what, you don't get to do multi pass anymore. If you want to skip the line, you got to pay this high price. None of that. Nobody's a trip is affected by this. Nobody's trip is any different than this. If you want to pay the extra, you pay the extra. It is right. only for deluxe guests and deluxe villa guests. So if you're in Pop or you're in uh, Port Orleans, you can't get this. It's only for the deluxe guests. And they, they're the only ones that have the opportunity. People, of course, are comparing this to Universal. Universal's works where if you stay at, at a premium, deluxe, signature, whatever they're calling it now, then you get it for free. And it's unlimited. Uh, if you purchase it, which you can purchase in their moderate and their value, um, you can either purchase a one-time, like each attraction one time or unlimited. It's various prices. These prices are kind of in line with that. You go to Universal Christmas Day, you're going to pay three to $400 per person mm -hmm. for Express Pass. So it's in line. The only difference is they get unlimited and we don't here with this one. Um, I, I just don't want people to freak out about this. I, I don't. Disney has said this is a pilot program. Yes, they're they very specific about yes, that. <laughs> very specific. They're rolling this out. Really, this is Disney saying... The only way to know if this works is to do it and see what happens. And this is exactly what they're doing. Uh, again, folks, your trip will not change. Your trip will not be affected in the nth degree of nothing. Um, if you choose not to do this, that's great. That's fine. If Universal has a dedicated line for Express Pass. They do not. This one doesn't. You just go to the Lightning Lane. So you, you and I will pay 20 bucks for Guardians each. We're going to be in line with people who paid all the money for Epcot. Um, we're still going to be in the same line for Lightning Lane. So it's kind of the same thing. Um, my only stickler point, and I'll, and I'll say I'll in my bit with this, and I'll kind of get your opinion on it. Two things. One, I want to be able to park up. I wish we could park up. If you pay that price, I would wish it was like one price. And I get it. You pay for Magic Kingdom only. But make it an average price across the board or pay it a little extra fee to go to other parks. Make it 500 and say, you know what? You get all parks. Mm. Uh, also, I, and if you don't want to do that, also, I don't like the fact that you can't do multiple rides on the same attraction. I understand because everybody would be at Tron all day long. Everybody rides Space Mountain <laughs> all day long. And so maybe maybe make it where when you're doing your Lightning Lane, because you have tiers, you pick one out of these attractions and like two out of those attractions. Make it in that top tier where you get one attraction. You can only get one ride on Tron and Peter Pan and Seven Dwarves and whatever and whatever. The other ones, ride as much as you want to. Because I, paying that much, I should be able to ride the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh like three times. With a, with a problem. I, I should be able to go on, you know, Figment's Journey to Imagination like five times for that price. I get it. You don't want to be riding <laughs> Guardians over and over. Understand that because people would flood the market, flood the land yeah. of that, and it ruins the experience because everybody's in there. Make it Guardian a one-time thing, and let's make Pixar Film Fest unlimited. I want to, I, I'm tired. I was in Pixar Film Fest. Still never done that. So what are your thoughts on all of it? Just, uh, can you do good, bad, whatever, break it down? Um, 
So uh, yes, yeah, so I too woke up this morning and was like, "What the heck is this?" <laughs> like <laughs> all the chats were blowing, up. all the boards were blowing up, Facebook was yes. imploding. <laughs> yes, um, so it, it took me a little while to get to it, just because mornings are chaotic. Um, it's like you have a husband and two kids. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Stop complaining. <laughs> um, so while i think the price is what it is mm -hmm. i think it's just another option to offer to clients right. and if they want to purchase it great and if not just stick with multi-pass and single pass mm -hmm. and you know why don't you compare this against a vip tour and we can sell you a vip tour as well so i think it's just another option that disney is is offering um not to like not to be more in line with universal, but maybe mm -hmm. to be more in line with universal. Right. I, I don't really know. I mean, cause it's like the same concept that, you know, the highest tier of resort gets access to this automatically right. where, um, I mean, it's a little different, but, um, yeah, it is what it is. Will I ever do it? I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. for magic kingdom to me, that's probably the price that's validated the most because mm -hmm. that's where the most attractions are. Um, Hollywood but, probably too. There's a lot in Hollywood. I mean, Hollywood, so, yeah, because of the yeah. shows, like the shows are like a, a time eater, right. you know, right. and so like to kind of be able to just do that whenever you want. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and maybe I'll try it at some point once it's out and I'll see how it is and I'll offer it to clients. Mm -hmm. And if they want to do it, they do it. And if they don't. OK, yeah. <laughs> and I think for each family, you have to determine what what value you're putting into the money you're spending, um, because there are people out there that will spend That's the money. That's a great for, point. Actually. Yeah, there are people out there that will spend the money for Grand Floridian, for contemporary, for the, for Old Key West, for the deluxe resorts, because they want the deluxe experience and they don't mind spending extra. Maybe this is a once every three or four year vacation. Hey, let's go. I'll, I'll go all out. Let's just pay it. Let's just do it. This is another I, aspect. Know, we're going of, Christmas. Like, I don't want to wait in line. I'm paying yeah. all this money. I don't want to wait in line. So we're going to plump down an extra however much it costs for my family of four. It's a lot of money, but you know what? We're going to walk right on Mermaid. We're going to walk exactly. right on Space Mountain and not, not that big of a deal. For our family, you know, every family is different. Your family is different than mine. My family, we have the DAS Pass. We have the DAS Pass. So we're able, if we didn't buy Multipass, we could still use that. And that's our benefit for our family. Um, if I had the extra, if somebody gave me, you know, an extra thousand dollars in Disney dollars or gift cards or whatever and said, hey, put this towards your trip, we might go from French Quarter or Riverside to Contemporary. We might spend that on the resort instead of putting it on you. Yeah. But other people might be like, you know what? We got a great rate at Saratoga Springs and save money, and we're not going to go to Grand Flow. We're going to spend this money mm -hmm. on on passes on Premier. Pass. That's awesome. So you have to decide for yourself as a family what do we want to spend the money on. Uh, and I I make no no judgment whatsoever at people paying this because people will buy this. People will buy this because it is oh, a pilot program. For sure, <laughs> because it is a pilot program. Disney will look at the number of people that are purchasing and say, okay. Not as many people purchase this as we wanted. Let's make some adjustments. Or they will say, oh, a lot of people want this. It's And it's a limited thing per day, by the way. A lot of people are selling. It's selling out. Oh, it's selling out. <laughs> Price goes up. You know, um, because honestly, I made the joke earlier. People bought the tent cabanas by Space Mountain when they put those oh, out. That's for like six right. I forgot about that. Yeah. You did say that they earlier. They sold those. Like People, bought, yeah. we all we all looked at those like those are the dumbest things I've ever seen. <laughs> People bought them. They <laughs> they paid 130 bucks for the day to have a private cabana by Space Mountain, um, which was the craziest, goofiest thing. But people bought it. Didn't enough enough people didn't buy it, so they took them away. So you know it, the 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 market will dictate how this works and how well it works. I don't honestly see Disney dropping prices on anything ever, but I can see them say, you know what. For the price, we're now going to open up to all the parks. Or now we're going to say, you know, it's unlimited. If you pay an extra, you know, fifty dollars per person, you can do unlimited, or you can do a tiered thing or whatever. I can see them opening up these benefits. Now it's available to all resorts, you know, pop and and, and moderate and whatever. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I just don't want people to get too caught up on the price. And everybody's the narrate the the narrative right now is like, oh my gosh, Disney is pricing out the average family. They're not. Nothing has changed for your price. If I quoted you a price for French Quarter yesterday, it's the same price. Your options are all still the same. You can pay a little extra money, a lot of extra money to do these. Otherwise, nothing changes for you. So it's just different you know, options. Yeah, and you like is. you said, you just have to weigh your options mm -hmm. for what part works best for your family. People, and like you said, people will buy this. Yep. If they made it more of a park copper, I uh, from the get-go, I think it may be more popular. I'm yep. sure the the surveys are going to come in with the mm -hmm. um with the feedback on right. that, especially making it a park hopper. So I'm curious to see how yeah. it rolls out. I mean, I applaud Disney for, you know, trying different things to mm -hmm. kind of 
<laughs> throwing right. stuff against the wall and see what sticks. Right. So yeah, let's see how it works. <laughs> I, I think if they had come in at a lower price and I, I don't know what they determined the price with, I have no idea what, what they looked at to say, you know what, let's set the price at this. But if they had come in and said like one, you know, 200 per person will get you all of magic kingdom. I think this thing would sell like gangbusters. I think oh, you throw, yeah. you, you throw four, four fifty on there for Christmas day. It's, it's crazy, but, um, but yeah, we will see. So, uh, you know, like you said, they throw it at the wall. They're going to see what sticks and, yeah. We'll see if it sticks. Disneyland also, Disney? Disneyland also has the same thing coming out. Um, with Disney World is done like the multi-pass seven days ahead of time. I didn't get the specifics on Disneyland. Uh, it's done a little differently there. It's first come, first serve when you get in, like theirs is done now. But I don't want to talk about Disneyland because I, I don't know the specifics of it. So I don't want to get into that. Right. But, um, final thing, what we intended on talking about anyway, Kyla, Halloween party. Oh, right. I forgot. You gotta go to the Halloween party. <laughs> <laughs> You went like, down to the great weekend um, with our uh, with our with our good friend Alexa down East Road, Alexa, and uh, you met up some other people, some locals there. Of course, the, the quasi producer Heather, aka the Moana Mom. Uh, you met up with the Blondies, of course, Jess and Emily, Emily of Bluebird Gifting Co., which is great. So they were there, and of course, Kristen, our good friend Kristen, Kristen was there. Came and and so, son. so you got to do a lot of stuff there. Halloween party. A little bit about tell us a little bit about Halloween party. Give us kind of a quick review. Um, I know we all haven't been in a couple of years, so kind of give us a review. I had not been in seven years. So at that point, oh, that's right. you didn't come two years ago. I no, forgot about that. No. Yeah. So what I, I mean, I was supposed up. to, yes, I was yes. supposed to go during Epcot's 40th mm -hmm. weekend and I didn't because of the hurricane. I got down there, but hurricane I didn't. Get Ian, maybe? I don't know, but it was stupid. Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So the last time I went was seven years ago when Disney didn't even have the rights, I believe, to Hocus Pocus at that time. So right. that is a huge part of mm -hmm. the night at this point. So just to like walk through like a mm -hmm. Halloween party 101, you arrive, you can arrive as early as four, it officially starts at seven, much like the Christmas party. There right. is a designated entrance. So you're kind of going um, over to the left of Tony's and like behind those shops uh, as you're entering. You get your trick or treat bag, you get a handful of candy and yes, people, this is not like trick or treating in your neighborhood. <laughs> they are not giving you one piece of candy. They are literally dropping like handfuls mm -hmm. into your bag. Which and it's good it's candy. Nice. It's not like now and later yes. and like oh, Mike and like, Ice. It's like yeah. Reese's and Hershey's and crap. <laughs> you it's sound like Frank. He's like, why do you eat Skittles and Starburst? Those are gross. And I'm like, well, those are my favorites. So no, they're good. They're good. Um, they're good candy. <laughs> it was. It was like M&M's, Twix, Snickers, like, all, like Mars, whatever the Mars. I mean, brand. you go to Gatorland, they're like, here's the circus peanuts. You know, it's, it's <laughs> Blech, gross. Right? Those are gross. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So I thought it was cool because there was a DJ in a giant pumpkin. She kind of looked like a zombie and mm -hmm. she was like, just like spinning tunes and like just welcoming everybody. So that was like really fun. Maleficent. No, not Maleficent. The other one. Uh, Cruella DeVille was uh -huh. there kind of like elevated on a balcony and kind of like taunting everyone as they walked in. So then basically, I think it's really important to prioritize what you want to do during the party because right. you could be there for the short ride wait times because almost all the rides are open and the wait times are super short because this is a limited capacity party or you're there for the Halloween stuff, which is exactly what we were there for. Right. So you need to look at the times of the shows the parade and the fireworks to make sure that you get to what you want to see in plenty of time to get a good seat. So um, we did do three rides and waited nothing. We did pirates, um, small world, which ended up being the death of us. Cause we waited till the last minute to do that like <laughs> right. at the end of the night. And then it just like <laughs> killed me. Cause I had been up since like two 30 in the morning. Um, so, and what else? Oh, Big Thunder, which was like awesome at night, you know, with mm. the park lit up and everything. So, um, trick or treating, there's giant blow up. They kind of look like giant candy corn sticks with right. like M&M characters on them. So that's where the trick or treating spots are. And you just go through your little line and get your handfuls of candy. Um, the rides are open, like I said, and then the show. So it's Hocus Pocus Villain Spectacular. So it is the Hocus Pocus, the Sanderson sisters, mm -hmm. along with a whole slew of villains, which was awesome because, again, I had never seen this show before. And we were like right up front. Um, Kristen brought us right up to the stage. So we had a fantastic view. Um, and then the Halloween parade, there's two parades a night and I believe two fireworks shows. Um, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, uh, they added the second one this year, right? They added 
a second show, a second parade. I think it's, I think there are two parades. Um, I would, is there, are there two fireworks shows? I thought there was just one. Maybe there was, just, well, we got to the earlier one. So okay. I think there was a later one. Mm -hmm. maybe i don't know i should have looked at the map i put it away before <laughs> oh i sent you the pictures look at the pictures of the map i sent you <laughs> see what times <laughs> um but the show was great um the fireworks was fantastic there was like an overlay you know projected onto the castle of jack and sally from nightmare before christmas and villains and it was it was a great fireworks show very crowded um the later, you know, Disney tip, hashtag Disney tips, the later show and the later fireworks are always going to be less busy because at right. that point it's late. The party starts at seven, like families are going to start leaving by like mm -hmm. 10 or 11. So the later ones were less crowded. Um, and then the parade, which was awesome. Um, we got kind of like a spot right where it starts in Frontierland. Mm -hmm. Um, so not as great as if you're like sitting on main street, but my thing is like, I just want to watch it. I don't need like the perfect view, but right, main right, street, right, right. you have like a perfect view. Um, but you're waiting longer for it. So again, you kind of have to prioritize what you're there for. So mm -hmm. the parade was great. There's pirates, there's the cadaver dance, there's haunted mansion characters, the ghosts, Madame Leota. Um, it's a fantastic parade and we had so much fun. Plus there's tons of Halloween treats. They're available for purchase, but there are so many across the park. We probably had, I don't know, maybe four. Um, we didn't get to a lot of them, but there's super cute, like themed Halloween treats, snacks, drinks, um, and it was a lot of fun to just kind of go through and focus on the Halloween stuff. Um, I would have loved to last till 12, but again, I, my alarm went off that morning. Yeah, you were up like 22 like that. hours that day and you're not somebody up. who does that very much. Yes, it was <laughs> That's me, not you. <laughs> I was, I was not going to nap that day. Like Alexa mm -hmm. and I had a plan and we were going to see through that plan and we did. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't matter that we only got to one third of the monorail resorts for our monorail crawl. <laughs> We'll get the other two. One third means like one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like you said that looks like there's, you know, 15. We only got to five of them. Nope. Got to one, Just got to three. one. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, so we met Kristen at Steakhouse 71 for martinis after mm -hmm. lunch. Um, so whatever, it's fine. And then we went back to get ready because we all had like outfits to wear for the Halloween party. Mine was like a Haunted Mansion themed outfit. Right. So um, I really wanted to make it to the last the last fireworks or the last parade. But I'm like, I am dying. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I am a zombie and should be in the parade at this point. Good ever, so Kyla. Yeah, cadaver <laughs> Kyla never Dan. <laughs> That's what I should do next time is cadaver Kyla. Um, so yeah, we got back. I went to bed. It was like 12 30 when we went mm -hmm. to bed. So um it was so much fun. It was it was such a great time. And the fact that you can go in early, it definitely helps. Um, the party stuff again doesn't start until 7 p.m. So while you can get in at four o'clock, um, the party stuff, you're not gonna see any of it until 7 p.m. So you know, I usually tell my clients not to do a park that day and then, you know, just have like a chill day so that you can last as long as possible for that mm -hmm. party. Um, and Alexa and I didn't do a park that day. We went to lunch at Wilderness. We went to the Contemporary, back to Wilderness and then boated over to Magic Kingdom. So um, it was so much fun. Yeah. What are your questions, David? That's awesome. So we're, how are the crowds? And you may have said this already. I'm sorry, but how are the crowds? Were they? Um, I didn't think there were any, actually. Okay, good, seemed, good, good. Yeah, there it was a pretty low crowd. I mean, that's the whole point mm -hmm. of the thing. But right. I know that some party nights seem like busier than others. Right. I thought it was great. Like, I've been to probably three or four, I guess, over the last I don't know, 15 years or something. Um, there was one time when I was going like every year, two or three years in a row. And early on, it was great. Low crowds. There was a time I want to say before COVID, before the darkest timeline when the crowds were just insane, like they were selling too many tickets and people were just so mad. Um, yeah. And I think they pulled back from that. And from what I, and the one I went to actually was not bad at all. And so I'm hoping that they're doing the same thing where they're not just, they're just overly selling the tickets uh, again, because for a couple of years there, it was, it was pretty awful. Um, so that's what I had heard yeah. too. So did you get any merch? I know this is last year, two years ago, they didn't have any merch available at all. So did you buy any merch, any t-shirts, any pins? Did I... you get me a map? That's the question. I have one map and I'm keeping it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter because I'd never see it. You'll never send the darn thing. 
the mail, the, the, the mail state, the mail post office, post like, mail, mail station, yeah. the mail station. <laughs> I feel like that's a very Disney term. The mail station, the magical mail station, the post office in town is getting their window for once. I, I'm going to send you a self-addressed, self-addressed stamped envelope. I mean, so like, just, five. Well, like, yeah, like that. Yeah. For future stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Backstory um, on this for the audience. Like two years ago, I asked Kyla to get me a passport at one of the events, and she did like one of the festivals at Epcot, and she still has it. Like it's literally four festivals ago. <laughs> so, it's so funny. She's like, I still have um, it. I was gonna bring it to you and I forgot. No, did I get any merch? Um no, no, because honestly, like I like Halloween, and Frank thinks I'm like a Scrooge when it comes to Halloween. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the the character is for Halloween, like Scrooges to Christmas. Right. Um, I just like Halloween and I basically just look at it as like a holiday to get through to when my favorite holiday is, which is Christmas, yes. which begins yes. like, like, like now November. I mean, nobody's going to fault you for putting up a tree. Like right now we're in that, we're in that window that if you put your tree up, I mean, mo- some people will be like, it's a little too early. Wait for Halloween. But a lot of people will be like, you know what? Look at the world. Do it. Do what you want. Make your hands well, happy. And that's what I think. <laughs> the- <Enjoy. laughs> yes. That's what I think the attitude is since COVID. Like, do whatever right. you want for holidays. Just d- yes. do what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. No, our tree generally goes up Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. Um, but I did say to Frank, actually, this year, funny enough, like, oh, why don't we put it up like before Thanksgiving? We're not hosting this year. Mm-hmm. So like, it doesn't, you know, who cares? We're thinking about putting um, ours up like early November. Because usually we wait till like December. But- but yeah. Yeah, we're going on that trip. And by the time we get back, it'll be like December the 10th. And then it's like, well, we've got two weeks of Christmas. How much do we want to put up? Because we've got to take it down in two weeks. Yes. And just we put it up in November. You know, we don't even take it down to like mid January anyway. So, oh, us gotta, too. Yeah. We wait. And my like kid loves it. He loves the tree up. He just, it's of course, so he loves cozy. it. And he loves having the presents under the tree. So it's really awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. So, so, you know what I would have bought? And I just, I was just like, no, it's fine. Like, I try to look at my lounge fly. <laughs> <laughs> I try to look at my lounge fly pur- purchases and like mm-hmm. validate the cost. Like how much am I going to actually use this one? Like I have two right. Christmas ones, but I, but I use them because I go right. at Christmas time every year. So um, there was a really cute candy corn lounge fly just in the colors. And it had like the little ears and I'm like, mm. oh, that one is actually like really cute, but I don't go during the fall every year. So I was like, uh, I'll just hold off. But and now looking back, yeah. I'm like, oh, I should have got it. <laughs> That's like me in Disney shirts. I've got so many now that they're like, I'll go three trips without even wearing one of them because there's so many. And I only go for you know four or five days at a time. So I don't have time to wear all my shirts. And so, and there's some shirts I'm not going to wear around town. They're just too bright and too oh, much yeah. to wear. I have to wear them at Disney. And I'm like, that poor shirt's been sitting there since 2021 and I haven't worn it yet. So I guess I should take it. But then I can't wear this one and I love this one. So <laughs> yeah, I understand. So I yeah, think, I mean, they yeah. have a ton of merch for Halloween. Right. I just, mm-hmm. I just didn't purchase it, but once save Christmas, it for your so. Christmas lounge fly. I, yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so anything we missed, we took, I think we covered everything on the list. A lot of stuff going on. Um, Jen and Heather will be back next week. I want to hear, we'll hear all about the summit, all about the new stuff. And Heather will be here to pump us up about Disney and everything. Cause she, she's good at that. And yes. so, <laughs> so yeah, may, and I told her get John Stamos on. She met John Stamos. I was like, get him on the podcast. Oh, that would be my fun. schedule is fine. Jen's schedule is always messed up, so she'll ha- he'll have to work with Jen's schedule. But other than that, you know, get him on the podcast. <laughs> I mean, I'll host that way. <laughs> I'm sure, 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 sure. sure. <laughs> Everybody suddenly wanted to be on the podcast. Oh no, you told you turned me down a couple times. Nope. Uh, Kyla, where can we find you on the worldwide interwebs? You can find me at Kyla Melberg dash travel agent at Upon a Star Travel and Concierge on Facebook and mm-hmm. at Disney Geek Twenty Seven on Instagram. Still, because I haven't changed my name yet. <laughs> I don't think you should. I really don't. Ah, I don't know. Let's just, do a poll. I, <laughs> so I, I, I like the name. And and as always, and I don't just say this because Kyle is one of my best friends. Like I love, I love your account. I use tons of content every day. You. Your stories Thank are always you. up. It's consistent. It's always fun. It's always very just joyous and everything. And, you know, so I, and I love that. And it's, I try to emulate that account. I can never quite get there but you know um so yeah go follow disney geek be one of the many thousands of people that follow disney geek uh 27 mm. also you can follow me on instagram at the magic on a dollar um i did try to get rid of the the and go back to magic on a dollar but instagram is not having any of it because that's the one that i lost four years ago so and they're ridiculous. like no nope, can't have it back so I'm like, well, okay it is what it is but uh the magic on a dollar find me on facebook at magic on a dollar and disney on a dollar where i try to do all the news and all the fun stuff and everything as well and of course 
we got a podcast. Upon Us Our Travel is where you can find all of our Upon Us Our Travel stuff. Uh, and we're on all the places on TikTok and on Twitter and Instagram and all the all the good stuff. And there might be a MySpace page out there somewhere. I don't know. But find us there. <laughs> and the MSC Podcast as well. And the MSC Podcast at gmail.com is where you can let us know thoughts, what you think, what do you, you know, what are you thinking about the premiere pass? Are you gonna get it? Let us know. We'd love to hear from you guys. Um, yeah, Kyla, thank you for joining us uh once again. Thank you. I mean you're a host, so just you know, this is one of, this is your podcast too. It is what it is. This is always <laughs> so fun. I always love it. It's always fun. For Kyla, for Jen and Heather down at the summit for myself and this is the Major Electrical Podcast. Don't forget to thank your Phoenicians. See, that, that's, us. that's called that a connection. Good. That's called a, nicely that's called done. A teaser. Yes. Good job, David Thank Dollar. You. Yeah, All right. Um, at upon a star, Jen, or my mm -hmm. personal Instagram is at Jen underscore Novotny. Perfect. Find me at the Magic Honey Dollar on Instagram. Find me at Magic Honey Dollar and uh, Disney Honey Dollar on Facebook. Also, our, our two sort of kind of co-hosts that we're going to come back very, very soon to talk about Eat to the Beat and the yes. Disneyland Festival and the Halloween party. Find our good friend yep. Kyla, Kyla, Kyla at Disney Geek 27 on Instagram. Yep. And of course, Heather is our quasi producer, a.k.a. At the Moana Mom on Instagram mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so definitely find her. And of course, the MSA podcast on all the places, Upon a Star yeah. Travel on all the places. Jen, good list, good discussion. Let's go and cross our fingers and hope that nothing happens with the hurricane. Yes, <clears throat> we're here. So yes. for Jen, I'm Dave, Main Street Electrical Podcast. Let's go and hey, thank the Phoenicians. Thank you for listening to the Main Street Electrical Podcast. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at The MSE Podcast. Or visit our website at themsepodcast.com. Be sure to subscribe. And may all your wishes come true.